Oakland University star Trey Townsend, he is in the transfer portal. Would it make sense here at Michigan State? Also, Mark Montgomery, he's taken the U of D job. And then we are joined by Casual Big Ten to talk about Michigan State. And, well, yeah, all things Big Ten basketball. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Spartans is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bet if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. It's going to be all hoops. On today's show, we did a lot of football on yesterday's. If you missed that, we talked about six stats that we are comfortable saying that will improve in the upcoming season. So if you're looking for some pigskin talk, yesterday's show is where I want to guide you. And also tomorrow's show, because we're going to be talking with Matt Wenzel of MLive.com. But today, it's all about the round ball, because right here in the great state of Michigan, Horizon League Player of the Year, Trey Townsend out of Oakland. Yes, the guy has John Calipari's head placed right above his mantle at his apartment or his home, wherever he lives. He is in the transfer portal. Now, this has been heavily rumored. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I I thought he was in this transfer portal the whole time. That's how heavy the rumors were. But yes, it is official on this Wednesday, April 3rd, that he is swimming in the portal. And look, it is well well reported that both Michigan State and Michigan are going to be after his services. So... We're going to kick off today's show talking about that. Would it make sense, Trey Townsend to Michigan State? First and foremost, I want to hammer this point home. I don't want to be confused in any way, shape, or form. Trey Townsend is an outstanding basketball player. I mean, what a player this guy is. Horizon player of the year for a reason, and he shined when the lights were the brightest. We're talking 30 against NC State, 17 points and 12 rebounds when they slayed Kentucky in that opening round, and also won the Horizon League title game, just a casual 38 points to drag the Golden Grizzlies to the finish line and into the NCAA tournament. And also, I what a player. I, how about just what a story, too? Kid grew up going to Oakland basketball camps. He loved Greg Campy. He always wanted to play for Oakland. And then next thing you know it, delivers Oakland and Greg Campy his first NCAA tournament win. So just a great story. But hey, after a season like that, it's time to get paid. It's time to get paid by the big boys here. Now, would it make sense at Michigan State? I, I, I swear I'm not trying to be an Eeyore. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. Again, I'll reiterate this. He's a fantastic player. I have no, there's absolutely no doubt that he can translate that to a power six team. All right. I'm not going to be one of the people that say, oh yeah, he just did that because he was in the horizon league. No, no, no. Good player. But here are my qualms. That's right. I'm using a big word here. This is how serious I am. Here are my qualms about Trey Townsend at Michigan state, Michigan state. Let's look inward right now. Let's talk about the Spartans before we start talking about the player that could come here. Michigan state has two glaring needs. These aren't wants, okay? These are glaring needs on the roster. They need a center, and they need a big wing, someone that can play that three spot, okay? We're going to start with a center. Now, why do you need a center? <laughs> I assume you guys have at least one functioning eyeball out there. Uh, you've, you've seen what happened with the center position this year. If you get a center, that means Xavier Booker can primarily, if not all the time, play the four, okay? Why do you need a big wing? Also, well, it helps Akins slide up and play that two position full time, and it also drops Cohen Card down to the four. You don't have to rely all your hopes on retro freshman Garrick Norman, who I'm sure will be a fine player, but let's say he doesn't hit the ground running. You don't need to bounce it between a, a redshirt freshman Garrick Norman, Jaden Akins playing out of position for another year, and then Cohen Carr, who I don't think is a three whatsoever, guys. So that helps the roster right there. If you get a center, if you get a big wing, a tweener guy. A guy that plays the four, like our friend Trey Townsend, is that really solving any of those issues right now? Again, hell of a player. I'll probably say it three more times by the time we're done with this segment, but 
I just don't think it solves any of the problems that Michigan State has right now. Cohen Carr, he can and should play the four when Xavier Booker isn't because he should be playing a lot of the four too. You add another four in there, then, oh my God, here we go again. It's Xavier Booker back at the five. It's Cohen Carr back at the three. And sure, you have a good player there in Trey Townsend, but you do have two other sophomores that you have a lot of hopes in playing out of position, right? And I get it. Like, you could go to the small ball lineup, you know, play Xavier Booker at the five. It's got a really big question here, guys. Uh, who's playing defense in the front court in that lineup? Xavier Booker, talented player. My God, he's going to hear his name called the NBA draft in 2025. I don't think it's going to be because of defensive reasons. Trey Townsend, sure, he could hold his own defensively. He's still six foot six at the end of the day. So you can do a thing where, okay, offensively, we're going to have the six foot six Trey Townsend be your low block score and then hover Xavier Booker around the perimeter. And then on defense, we switch it around. Xavier Booker is going to play in the post on defense. Is that actually going to work, though? I, I, I just I just don't see it there with Xavier Booker defensively yet. And don't get me wrong, he has his flashes when he's coming in the help side and coming across the lane to swat a shot out of air. I'm talking like when he's going to post it up on. That's where I start to get a little of the heebie-jeebies. Here's the other qualm with Trey Townsend. Right now, Michigan State has one scholarship spot open. And if you actually want to be technical about it, it's not even open right now. The way that I'm so confident, and a lot of people are confident that there is one open right now, is that A.J. Hogard is presumed to eventually leave. As this thing goes off behind me, we'll take a quick break here. Yes, that noise was the team ticker sign behind me that goes off whenever Michigan State, any sport, kicks off or tips off a game there. So let's get back to what we are talking about. A.J. Hogard is presumed to be leaving. And no, that's not just like me willing it into existence. The way he talked after that Michigan game, like saying that, okay, this is like our last shot. You know, like it seems like it's the end of the road here for AJ Hogard at, at Michigan State. But right now, no one else is even presumed to leave or is on their way out as things stand right now. Again, th this could change any day, but there are 12 spots taken right now. There's only one left. Do we want to use this spot on a guy that is not a center or not that big wing? This is where I have the issue with like the Trey Townsend discussion, because look, if this was a year where we had four scholarships available, or if we were an Indiana type team with seven scholarship spots available, oh my God, you take him in a heartbeat. But our kitchen is currently on fire. Our basement is flooding, but yet we just be focusing on like getting a new shower head for the bathroom. Like, no, no, again. Not not two things that we want this offseason. It's two glaring needs that we have with center and big wings. So that is the other qualm, if you will. Now, will it work? Could it work? Like, let's say this has because, yes, like this is actually a reality. Like, this very well could happen. The way that I would be swung around on it is if someone else leaves, you get two open spots, and then you add Townsend and then a wing. Okay, you could stomach that a lot more. Or, hey, let's say it's Townsend and then a center. It's just why right now, on April 3rd, as we are recording this, look, I'd be, I, I'd be happy. I'd support him. My God, I'm not going to root against the kid for crying out loud. I would also take a look and wonder, uh-huh. Did we really get better this offseason? Because we already lost Tyson Walker. That, that's already a big hit. Is replacing Malik Hall with kind of another version of Malik Hall, but actually shoots a little worse than Malik Hall did, and didn't address the center position, or didn't address the big wing? Did we really get better this offseason at all? And I guess Xavier Booker's going to play a lot more. But boy, these are big holes that we have to fill here. And I just don't know if one Trey Townsend does it. So, hey, look, again, it can work. We're just going to need to see some more attrition on this roster to have Michigan State have at least two uh, scholarships open for the portal. Really quick to end the segment here, Mark Montgomery, assistant coach who's been here since 2021, and that was after a stint here from 2002 to 2011. He took the uh, probably the worst job in all of basketball. But, hey, at the end of the day, if there's a head coach opening, yeah, of course you're going to go for that role. He is the head coach at University of Detroit right now. And it was also uh, reported by Tony Paul of the Detroit News that Izzo was a huge advocate to get Mark Montgomery this job. So he departs here. Uh, good luck to him over at the Titans program. If not for nothing else, the bar 
is like at Earth's core right now. It is hard to do any worse than the last regime did there at U of D. But this is what we want for that other assistant coaching role that is now open. It's basic stuff, guys. Like we want the youth, of course. We want someone that is a strong recruiter. But also at the end of the day here, let's be real with ourselves. Odds are this is going to come from the Izzo family, right? Guys that he has coached with before. I know that some people out there want, hey, get out of your own tree, get someone that is fresh with new blood, but I just don't see it happening with Izzo. I would not be like upset to be wrong there, but yes, I think it's going to be someone inside the MSU universe here. Hey, maybe it's someone that's already in-house, like a guy like John Borovich, a guy that's the recruiting director. Maybe he slides into that third assistant coaching chair or someone in the family. Tom Tom Nairn, Bowling Green assistant coach right now, a guy that was even a solid recruiter when he was a player here. Maybe that you give him a shot. Or, hey, maybe you keep it in the literal, actual family. You take the James Madison assistant. That's Tom Izzo's nephew, but I have a hard time believing that's actually going to happen. But, yeah, so I don't have a longer list of actual names, but I, I do think it's going to be someone in the realm of Michigan State right there. We're going to be joined here by Kent Peterson of Casual Big Ten in a hot segment. First, need to talk all your ears off about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Folks, you know that my bracket was blown to smithereens in the first round. I lost three of my four final four teams, and more times than not, before the world of FanDuel, That'd be a very, very sad time for the rest of the tournament. But again, FanDuel has got it popping for March Madness. They have all the props ready to go this week. And they also have who is going to win the national title. Uh, UConn is at a smooth minus 185 right now. Purdue plus 190. Alabama 13 to 1. And then NC State, the darlings of the Wolfpack, they are 20 to 1. So, hey, if you're like me and you're just looking to get any action on this weekend because your bracket is irrelevant, Hey, go on over at FanDuel. And it gets even sweeter for new customers because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $200 you could use to bet on the tournament, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown and make your first bet a big win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Absolutely, positively kicking myself. It has been so long since we have had this gentleman on. It is Kent Peterson of Casual Big Ten. Ken, I know it seems like years since we've chatted, but man, how are you doing after a busy, very eventful, still ongoing, really, Big Ten basketball season? I'm doing great, man. This basketball season's been so fun. I'm glad you mentioned the last time I was on, though, that it's been so long because I know. if I could, for like 10 seconds, just yeah. do a quick, quick victory lap. Um, yep. I was on to do the Michigan State football like over-unders yes. last summer. Yep. And I did I did say reluctantly because, you know, all Michigan State people watch this that you guys were going to hit the yeah. under and that hit. Yeah. And I was pretty close on yeah. most of my predictions and I took some heat yeah. in your comments. Did so, you uh, shoot? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I'm back had... I'm back to give you some more hot takes that will be correct <laughs> for Good. sure. The almanac is here, folks. You had the investigation in your hand that yes. day when we recorded in late June. You knew it was going to happen on that fateful Saturday night in week two of the college football season. <laughs> Honestly. That's exactly right. I can't really take a ton of credit for it because a yeah. lot changed from the time that we recorded till the time like football season actually <laughs> kicked off. But at the end of the day, I was still right, though. Uh, That's the key. Here. And I'll, I'll encourage key. every Michigan State fan to turn this down because we'll we'll try to keep it positive here. But like, even if Mel was here the whole season, mm. when, when things have changed that much, like I, I don't maybe know. win one more game, but that's still they still ain't covering the over five and a half. But nevertheless, yeah. um, we're, yeah. we'll just try to bury that in the review mirror as we look ahead here, Kent. Because before we started recording, you know, we're chopping it up. You're saying, man, it's it's crazy to keep up with everything going on in the Big Ten. Well, us over here in East Lansing, we've hacked it. It's very easy to keep track of everything when almost nothing is happening. No one's entered the transfer portal. Even the guy that we all expect to enter the transfer portal and A.J. Hogard. We've barely talked to anyone in the portal, too. Like It, it has been a stagnant offseason here as we are now in day 11 of Michigan State's offseason. So with that said, what are your thoughts about Michigan State as we go forward into the summer here? Well, first I'll go back just a little bit. I want to say that the basketball team, you know, they took a lot of heat from fans, casual fans like myself, or just mm -hmm. fans from the team in general for having such a high ranking going into the season and then falling off pretty much. Sure. But 
I think that they were playing really good basketball. Like I was telling you right here uh, before we got started, yeah. that Purdue game in the Big Ten tournament really opened my eyes. I was like, this team can compete with anybody. The problem was it just took so long to get things going. So it really got me excited about the future of Michigan State basketball. And I think if they can, you know, kind of grab some of that, you know, a little bit of magic that they were getting here at the end of the season and, uh, you know, parlay that into next season, it's a, it's a really bright future and I'm excited about it. I did see one tweet, by the way, I almost got mm -hmm. got on okay. uh, April Fools that said that Jaden Akins was in the yes. transfer portal. <laughs> And yes. I actually was starting to type out a quote tweet, and I was like, whoa, 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 not today. Not going to happen today. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Way to protect yourself there. That's, yes. that's some slick work. Because, um, yes, like, they did play outstanding, too, in that Mississippi State game. And then, like, yeah. a lot of us in East Lancer are like, oh, yeah, they might lose North Carolina, but, oh, it's going to be a dogfight, baby. Let's yeah. go. Boys are cooking. And they were, and... too, even in the first half of that game. Oh, I was like, dude. oh, here we go. Here we go going into the under eight timeout just having unc by the you know what and then i know and then the team that we saw the other 29 games uh showed up <laughs> this season now here we are in the offseason a lot of moves have to be made here we just talked in the first segment about how you need to find a center in the portal or hey if not a center then at least a big wing but if you're tom Izzo, let's say that he calls you ken and he says hey ken i'm gonna actually throw the keys to you What's the number one thing Michigan State needs to make sure they do in this offseason to be back as part of one of the top three teams in the Big Ten next year? I think it is in the post, but it's it's less about the post offense and more about the post defense. You guys okay. need somebody that can defend down low, like number one. And yeah. I, have a, I have quite a few guys listed that we can talk about if you want to go through them, but uh, okay. most of them were guys that, you know, the post guys that I looked up were guys that I thought could do a good job doing that. Yeah, and uh, not yeah. focusing as much as like getting production from them offensively uh, down low. So that would be my number one thing I would tell Tom. And I would say uh, I would also say, Tom, let's let's get started. Let's uh, let's yeah. get this going. Let's start doing some stuff. But <laughs> it's not really like the hard thing about, you know, analyzing what Michigan State's going to do in the transfer portal is that no, like you said, no one has entered yet. So yeah. you don't know exactly who is leaving and what the needs are going to be exactly. So like. Again, with the guys I have listed, it's like all positions because you don't really know what is going to happen yet. So that's what's, that's what's frustrating about it right now. Every yeah. other team, it seems like guys immediately when the, the season was over, was like, I'm in the portal. Right. And Michigan State, they're just not doing that <laughs> at the moment, which maybe they're, maybe they're all staying. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I mean, A.J. Hogarth essentially said that he was leaving after the Michigan road game when he said, like, this was my last chance to beat them at their place. Like, oh. Okay, that seems pretty definitive, but here we are. Again, day 11 of the offseason, and yeah. even he hasn't tweeted out the graphic or anything. So, yeah, who knows what is going to happen here. But I would love to get into your list here, man. Look, yes. look at you just doing homework over yeah, here. Yeah, I got Coming to. Coming in hot. Love it, so, man. Here we go. I made a few categories, so okay. I'll go through the categories. I won't talk about these guys very long, but the first one sure. is the one that I'll talk about like the least because I feel like I know you've talked about one of these guys already. And okay. uh, most Michigan State, like, real basketball fans already know about these guys, so I don't really have to convince you that they're good players. But the at, this category is called the actually possible category. Okay. I and like that. Uh, that, the, that list includes uh, the guy that you just talked about a few days ago, Javon Hadley from Colorado, yeah. which I know you just said that you think he's leaning Iowa State. I would say, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, that would, that would stink because he was fun to watch uh, in March Madness for sure. Like right. or, or their conference tournament, I should say, at least. Um, and then the other guy, obviously, for me, and I haven't heard anything about this, and I should preface all this by saying I have no information about any of these guys. This is just okay. guys that I like <laughs> off the and cuff. guys that I would love <laughs> yeah. to see play at Michigan State. So mm -hmm. just, just off the rip right there. But Trey Townsend from Oakland We've obviously would him. be like huge yeah, get. Second. Yep. Huge get. 17 and okay. 8 last year. He already lives in Michigan. He's already like familiar with Michigan State, like right down the road. There's no reason that even right now, a coach should be mm -hmm. contacting him to see what his plans are. And uh, Michigan State should be showing interest in him at the very least, even right now, I think. Yeah. So those are the two that I have on the actual possible list. I like that. We actually just burnt up the whole first second talk about Trey Townsend and if it makes sense oh. with Michigan State. I was actually on the side of, look, you have one scholarship spot open right now. 
Do you want to use it on a tweener that's between a three and a five? Does that fix any issues here? So I was kind of a Debbie Downer on that. Okay, outstanding player, great player. Like if we had many scholarship spots, yeah. my God, you, you get him on campus immediately. But I know for a fact that there are many people that don't want to hear any part of what I had to say in the first segment. And they actually agree with you that, yes, you take him because he is a great player. And you mm -hmm. do just trust Tom Izzo to make it work with such a good player. So, yeah. Nice. I would, I would, I would love to see him at Michigan State. So, like you said, though, that's like, that is the problem, though. There's not enough spots right now, like because that no one's leaving. So, like, right. most teams <laughs> have like a bunch of available spots. They can just go approach all these guys and just say, "Hey, you want to play yeah. basketball here next year?" But Michigan State can't do that quite yet. Right. So we'll see. Like I said, we'll see what happens the rest of the off season. Still plenty more to come with our guy, Clint Peterson, but first need to talk you off about Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug right into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Now, Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to to deliver a constant supply of the videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro and college conferences too. Fire TV channels lets you dive in on all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. We're talking March Madness, NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos too. So what are you waiting for out there? Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV yet, well, hey, you should. Trust me on this one. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, here's my next category, though. It's the uh, interconference dreams. And this is kind of going go. off like what I put on the yep. on the Twitter stuff. Um, obviously, everybody wants AJ Store. That's not happening for anyone except for Illinois. Sounds like Correct. he's going there. You so, know, I, 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 an idiot, a, a bona fide idiot, just, just a guy on Twitter. I knew AJ Store was going to Illinois when he was yeah. currently still playing for Wisconsin. If a stooge like me just knows that, and I don't even <laughs> dig around that hard, you know something is wrong with the system if, if that's going on. So, yeah, sorry, I just had to jump in and add my That's what happened to me, too. It was there. like right. going into the Big Ten tournament, everyone was already talking about that. And I was like, how does everyone right. know this? Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But here's some other guys. And again, I, I feel like I have to preface all this. None of these guys have been rumored to go to Michigan State or even be yeah. talking to them. But these are just dreams of mine. It's just I fun. love 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 joshua ola joseph from minnesota for Ooh. no apparent reason this year <laughs> okay coach johnson just stopped playing him like okay. 10 games into the season got no burn yeah. super athletic he's a, he is a wing player but he can go down and get you rebounds and he could defend down low a little bit too love joshua ola joseph and like i said just disappeared from minnesota's roster i feel like something was going on behind the scenes with that with him and coach johnson but he's one i love Next guy I have on the list is my favorite player in the Big Ten, bar none, is Tony Perkins. And yeah. once again, not likely because he put out a list on Twitter already. Michigan State is not on it. But hey, we can dream still. Sure. We can dream. Tony Perkins, come to Michigan State. Why not? Let's make it let's make it happen. He's great. Um, and then the last three I have, like I said, I'll go through these quick. Uh Scotty Middleton from Ohio State. I like him because okay. he's a good outside shooter, and that's something that with Tyson leaving, obviously you guys are gonna have to replace some of that scoring, yep. um, and that that's what pretty much you know he's he's good at scoring outside. So that that would be great to have him. Gavin Griffins, I put him right on the list just because of I like his name. I like that he yeah. wears Rex specs. I think he's a fan <laughs> favorite, and I think that the Izone would embrace a man like this. Yes. Why not, Gavin? East Lansing, come it. check it out. I love right? this. this. That's what I'm talking about. Just for pure fan <laughs> interaction, just add the guy. Screw it. We have one scholarship spot. Let's Adam. go get a cult hero in here. Adam, right now. Make him walk on. Uh, but <laughs> then the last cult. guy, I feel like I feel like this last guy, and again, if there was more spots available, this would be a guy that I would be serious about is Dane Danger from oh, Illinois. Dude, yeah. That would be incredible. Like we were just talking yeah. about someone that like can he actually can score in the post right. and defend it. But um didn't do a lot the first half of the season, but really came on for Illinois the last uh, last half. Like, Big Ten tournament, he was unreal. And then, uh, yeah. you know, he did okay in the NCAA tournament. But the thing with him is, like, he's got a really high, ce uh, really high ceiling. 
and a really low floor. So like he's hit or miss what you're going to get from him, but he would be a guy that would be helpful instantly because of the experience that he had at Illinois this year. So uh, that was my only category that I had like multiple, multiple players. I love that. What do you guys, what do you That's think about those guys? Dude, I love it, especially the end with Dane Danger, because, uh, it, look, in my opinion, and I don't think the coaching staff agrees fully with this, but there are minutes to be had in our front court here, especially at that position. I also want to add one more interconference pipe That's dream. Right. And I know it's not going to happen because I think he already has his apartment at St. John's. Cliff, I'm oh, yeah. out of Rutgers, tough, physical, has given Michigan State the beat so many times. And if you can't beat him, which, like, yeah, we beat Rutgers this year, but if you can't beat the one on one battle, screw it, just have him join our team. I would absolutely love that. So I, I almost wrote that one down, but it, like, it was so unrealistic. Even even for a dream, it was <laughs> right. like, oh man, I, I can't even put this one on. There. I might as well be like be saying, like, though. Right. I might as well be saying like uh, Jalen Duran from the Pistons. Uh, I'd love to have him <laughs> join. That's how unrealistic a, a cliff would be on this team. But as we talk about other Big Ten teams, who has already gotten better this offseason? Because, again, Michigan State's stagnant. But mm. other teams have had a pretty productive offseason so far. Who or what one team has gotten the best in this short two weeks of the offseason so far? Well, for me, it's it's going to be Illinois. If okay. they actually get AJ store, because he's that big of a game changer for them. Yeah. He's a guy that can come in. Uh, obviously he can score 30 points a night. Sure. So if they actually yeah. get him, it's going to be Illinois. Um, I would say that not based on the portal because they haven't done anything in this yet, but Purdue has a really good recruiting class coming in next year. Okay. So they're automatically going to be really good. And then uh, again, this hasn't happened yet, but I know people on that listen to this show aren't going to like this, but Michigan uh, just de facto got better immediately after firing Juwan. Yeah, and uh, assuming that Dusty May is going to bring in the two guys that he needs to bring in, like, tomorrow, uh, they will be better than last year because they were the worst. So, that, like, you can't get any worse than they were. So they'll definitely get better. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're going to compete next year for, like, a title or anything, but uh, or a, a Big Ten title, I should say. Definitely not complete, competing for a national title, but... Uh, yeah, those three teams, I think, are are the ones that have gotten better so far because there hasn't really been a lot of – there hasn't been a ton of guys committing to Big Ten schools yet. I know Maryland got a couple yeah. of guys, but they also lost a couple of guys. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't – I can't really say that there's one team that's, like, dominating the portal right now. And sure. it will immediately be Illinois as soon as A.J. Storr makes that decision. If he doesn't go to the NBA, which I think he should, by the way. I think he's ready. Right. That, that is the weird thing, too. It's like I, I figure him to be more of an NBA player. But like when it comes to me grading out college players for the NBA draft, I, you might as well be talking to a novice person that has never watched television or any of these games in their entire yeah. lives. It's I'm, yeah. I'm useless. So I want to keep it with Dusty May here because I do want to pick your brain on that. What are your thoughts? Because my quick thoughts are is like, yeah, that's probably the best hire that you can make of this coaching carousel. But like it's 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 not like you brought back Jay Wright to the college game. Right. Well, I, I don't know. Like good hire. The only way to go is up for Michigan. But I don't know. What what are your thoughts on Dusty May at Michigan? I mean, my thoughts are that if you're getting rid of a guy that uh, you know can slap an opposing coach, has yeah. a super toxic locker room, mm -hmm. um, and can't coach his way out of a wet brown sack, <laughs> ah. then. Um, you're instantly probably, getting better no matter who probably you good. hired. Yeah, they could have hired a you know, Bloomfield Hills coach, whoever that is, and they would have been better. So I think they would have been OK no matter what. But obviously with Dusty, he's got some postseason success now. He's done it at a smaller school. You give a guy like that some more resources, some more NIL money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's definitely a better coach than Juwan. It's just going to come down to for Michigan. Is he going to be able to recruit? as well as Juwan did, because he did do well at recruiting. He just couldn't coach those guys. And then, um, you know, if he can still have that postseason success with a bigger program, a lot more pressure. So uh, definitely a good hire. But like I said, John L. Davis, Vladdy Golden, they have to be on the roster by the end of this week. Right. Or he's failing, I feel like. And I think that they will be. I think That'd they be both a will shock be shock if they're not, in my yeah. opinion. Um, really quick before we get you out of here, enjoy the rest of your week and weekend, of which Purdue is playing in. Um, yes. I know that you are casual Big Ten, obviously. Um, 
I can't root for Purdue. Like I just don't have it in me. Mm-hmm. I assume I assume you want to see the, the Boilers actually get it done, though. Yes, I do. I do want to see them get it done, and I think that they will get it done. Um, I, I think, think that so too. I know. I think so too. I think I'm one of the few like non NC State or Purdue fan, or just I think I'm one of the few fans in general that yeah. is not a fan of one of the teams that's rooting for Purdue because uh-huh. of you know right. the allegiance that I have to the conference here, but. Yeah, NC State's a great story. They've been fun to watch. Like, don't get me wrong. I love yeah. DJ Burns. It's been fun yep. to see them actually make it to the Final Four. I'm glad they're there. Um, but I think it's time for the run to come to an end. Purdue's favored by almost double digits in this game. I think that DJ's going to have some struggles to score as well as he has against other teams. Zach Eady is, uh, you know, talked about so much for his offense, but he's actually really, really good defensively, too. He's going to be able to disrupt that and uh i just don't think they're going to be able to make enough shots and purdue's number one three-point shooting uh team in the country they got guys left and right that when things are going bad they're gonna be able to knock down a big shot and uh, i don't think anything's going to go bad in this game i think that they run away with this game it's going to be you know 15 plus that they're going to win this game by and then they go to the national championship and i'm excited for it i like watching purdue i know a lot of people give them wow. crap because because That's of the, the free take. throw things wow. yeah well, the thing, like, I get it. I get what people say about Zach Eady shoots too many free throws. That's not fun. Yeah, I, no. I subscribe to that. I get that as a basketball fan. Nobody wants to see anybody shooting free throws. You want to see action when you're watching basketball. But yeah, Purdue does have a lot of that, though. They have fun guys to watch. They have, you know, uh, Lance Jones. They have a guy sure. like Fletcher who had a brother that went to Michigan State. So you should be cheering for Fletcher, right? No, because <laughs> I'm so bummed that once again, we just recruited the wrong brother here. It happened with Max Christie and Cam Christie, too, but whatever. So true. So true. Whatever. Um, but no, there's other fun guys to cheer for on this team. It's not just him. You know, Braden Smith's a good, uh, uh, like, you know, he's re- from a he's point guard perspective. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody do it the way that he's been doing it this he's season. Great. I know. In a long time. So he's fun to watch. You know, Purdue basketball, for me, is still fun to watch, even though Zach Eady shoots a lot of free throws, which he has to. No one can guard him. That's just part of the continue. game. I don't know what to tell people. Like, sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll continue to be a hater. There, there's great. no one anything can say. My, my own grandmother could be playing for Purdue this upcoming Saturday. I think I'd still root against them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grandma, if, if you're listening, but yeah, man, hey, I, I gotta give I you one more any... name that was on my list before I go, though. Go, oh, go, yeah, let's go. Give us a walk one off more here. name. Well, there was, okay. I only had two more names. One guy was Curtis Williams, and I, I put him on there just because he's from Michigan. He was the only guy right. yeah. in the top 100 that was from Michigan, uh, but and played for a really bad Louisville team. So I, I have to say that name, yeah. but this name I feel like would be hilarious. I feel like this should be like happening because it would be great. Okay. Terrace Reed, bring him in. I, I, bring him in. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I I, hey. I don't hate it. Not not Talk about like a guy that can defend situation. the post Say, d- and rebound. Are you kidding me? Like again, I, I'm gonna say it quietly. Like I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm not gonna go out and buy a jersey of him immediately. But like, <laughs> I, I could very easily talk myself into that one being okay that would be Rebounds hilarious just because defense. of the rivalry yeah. it would be so fun oh, yeah oh yeah oh so god fun. yeah oh i yeah. can i could get over that in a heartbeat i know like yeah. some michigan state is like oh we don't want him it's like, well, sir, have you <laughs> seen did you see the center position last year i'd take anyone right now so yeah yeah there we go be great folks that's ken peterson doing outstanding work over at casual big 10 and even though he comes in with the hot takes like under michigan win totals and then saying that he likes to watch purdue play basketball <laughs> we still welcome him with open arms i always love talking to you ken um it is not going to be months before we have you on again I, i'll try to drag you on here again this summer if not earlier this is always a hoot and a half so really do appreciate you and folks we will be back tomorrow that's right matt wenzel mlive.com talking michigan state football but until then Love you all. Go green.